Hello and welcome back to Where the Demon Lurks. We will be continuing where we left off on Lucian's route. And if you recall, he got a job. Well, he was offered a job and I'm assuming he's going to take it. Because he can't live scot-free with uh, Kobu and not pay rent. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... Last we saw, Lucian was sort of... Um, noticing that his powers were waning... And even though he talked to Gary, who turns out is actually God in this, you know, game, um, he still needs to find a way to help Kobu and then, you know, fix everything because, you know, he's a good boy and he has to do what God tells him. <laughs> um, but yeah, because he wants to be in God's good graces, I guess. You know, like every other dog, you know, has, you know, they aim to please. Anywho, so, well, that's mostly it because his route was shorter i think when because he was the first one to come out with a route so yeah anyways um well let's see what happens the evening sun paints the sky a warm orange hue though the peaceful atmosphere would be welcoming for anyone after a day of hard work you still have things to do lucian leads you to the shopping district at the entrance he pulls out his halo and taps it twice on the top a layer of static covers the halo, transforming into a tablet. Neat feature. What's with the dog ears on the protectors, though? I just, uh, thought that they were cute. The angel turns his attention back to the device and walks on. He raises an eyebrow as Lucian starts and stops walking sporadically. No, wait. He suddenly pivots and walks into a boutique. Lucian! You follow him inside, being led around the shop. He walks straight through a rack of dresses that you have to hurriedly pull off his head on his way out of the store. Lucian, where the heck are you going? I'm following the signal. Keep up. The pinging rises and falls with no discernible pattern, but the dog relentlessly follows it back and call, leading him into yet another store. You let him enter on his own. Within five minutes, someone screams, followed by a loud slapping sound. Lucian rushes out of the store and briskly walks past you. He's covering his left cheek with one hand, while his other hand keeps a steady grip on the halo, never taking his eyes off of it. He mumbles something to himself before walking through a crowd, cutting off and bumping into anyone he crosses, despite their exasperated cries. You walk behind him with your head low. Sorry, sorry... Reaching out and seizing Lucian's wrist, you yank him to a halt. Dude, stop running around at random. You're bothering people. But the halo says the gate is somewhere here. Do you see a door moving around? It doesn't have to be a literal gate. It's just a name. The thing could be floating for all I know. There's clearly nothing here. Well, well... But the halo... It probably needs a good tap. Give it here. You grab the device and smack it against your thigh several times. Hey! Lucian quickly grabs the item back. Stop that. That's not how you treat God's gift. Dude, it's obviously not working. No, God doesn't make mistakes. It found you, and it was working right before we got into this part of town. Just let me figure out the pattern here. The gate is definitely here. I just need to know how it's moving. You let out a long sigh. I'm not doing this. I'll search on my own. Don't go too far. He walks off, leaving you stranded in the middle of the street, pursing your lips. You rack your brain, wondering what to do next. Huh, where to start? A gate that can break through the realm of the living? That would have taken a ton of soul energy, not to mention the ritual would have required a lot of space. So, if I want to find that, I can... What can I do? I've got nothing. You are instantly tantalized by the urge to find a bench and take a break. No, stop being such a me and think. King needs help. What would he do in this situation? He'd probably ask around. Yeah, probably somebody who looks like they know a lot, too. Somebody must have seen some of that construction work. I need someone who would be here most of the time. 
Looking around, your gaze falls upon a, a lonely street side vendor. Half of a roasted chicken hangs behind the food display case, as though proudly announcing to the world, look at how good my food is. Get it while it lasts. It's the only stall still open. The rest had either closed for the day or were never in business to begin with. Considering you have nothing left to lose, you head over to the chicken and rice stall in question. A slender man wearing an apron stained with brown sauce stands up from his seat. He smiles warmly at you. Hi there! Want some chicken and rice? I've got some juicy roasted chicken! I'll take two, both breasts. I've got some roasted pork for another three dollars. He pulls out a slab of crispy pork from a compartment behind his stall. There's not much left, but the bright orange crust from the roasting the pork's skin spurs your appetite. Mmm, just a chicken is five dollars already. I don't think so. The vendor nods and starts preparing the dish. Um, business looks good? Of course, my chicken and rice is the best in town. I've been selling it for a decade. Trust me, try elsewhere all you like. But you'll love mine so much, you'll be back in no time. What time do you usually start selling? I'm here from breakfast to dusk. Hey, then you must have seen a boatload of interesting things go on around here. My friend and I are actually looking into supernatural spots in the town. Ah, you one of them too, people? Not really, my friends just likes to hear about mysterious and creepy stories. Why don't you take them to the old Kibbleton Hotel by the hillside? People are disappearing all the time over there. Yeah, we'll check that out later. But what about here? Come on, you must know something interesting about this part of town. Maybe. Or maybe not. I've got a lot of chicken and pork to sell. Perhaps if I had less on my plate, I could recall better. His eyes dart towards the pork and back at you. Rolling your eyes, you pull out your wallet. You know what? I think I'll take the roasted pork with my chicken. Two servings of roasted pork coming right up. So... So, you see the street over there? He points down the road to his left, leading beyond several rows of closed shop lots. Yeah, what about it? That's Doberwalk 1. We are on Doberwalk 2. All the businesses that used to be on Doberwalk 1 either moved here or closed down permanently. So it's a bad business location? Yeah, probably has some shitty feng shui. There's some rumors that all the bad business started with the death of the arcade owner who owed money to the local gang. Since then, those who walk the street sometimes hear a painful scream come from the arcade. Or a sickening, the overpowering feeling of being watched by hundreds of eyes. What? I never heard of that one. It's bad for business to talk about it. People who know someone was murdered instinctively wonder if they will be next. That's the main reason we all shifted our premises here. Start clean. How real exactly are those rumors? Personally, I believe it. I walked the street a while back. I swear I heard. My... The man trails off. You're curious, but you decide not to press it. His hand trembles as he closes the lid of the packed food. He fumbles with the plastic forks and spoons as he bundles it and your takeaway together with a rubber band. He hands you the food in a bright purple plastic bag, handing him money in return. After paying for the meal, you store it inside your backpack. The vendor thanks you for the patronage and begins to close the stall. You ponder about the new information as you walk over to find your stray angel. Lucian. Hmm? What is it, Kobu? Well, any luck? Why, yes, I've managed to decipher the movement of the gate. Look! Lucian shows you the tracking tool. The radar display is shown a dot moving across the screen before blipping on the edge of the display and moving in a perpendicular direction. Are you showing me your screensaver? I know what it looks like, but I am confident that we can reach that gate if we find the boundaries that cause the gate to bounce around. Or we could check out this lead I got instead. What lead? The chicken rice vendor I talked to mentioned a former arcade where someone died. Since then, no one goes to that area. Sounds like the perfect place to build a gate. Lucian taps his mouth with his forefinger. He gazes far into the direction of the street you mentioned, then back at his tablet. 
No, no. We need to stick to this. This is Lord Gary's plan, and he knows what's best. Come on. We're wasting daylight chasing a screensaver. Lord Gary is never wrong. He made the perfect device for this task already. Well, I'm going with or without you then. You take several steps in the direction of the haunted street before turning back to face Lucian. Here I go. All alone. If this is real and I die, it's on you. Fine. I'm coming. The streets of Doberwalk 1 bear the scars of a place long forgotten. Weeds have taken root in the cracked walkways. The road is now a milky gray. No one has bothered to retar it. Lucian, though by your side, would keep darting his eyes back to where you both came from. Would you relax? If I'm wrong about this, then we can go chasing that bouncing gate whenever. There's no guarantee that it'll still be there. If the gate can move, anything is possible. It was a handful getting this far. Your doubts resurface, but you persist on forward until you reach the arcade. A two-story structure with stripes of white paint that has peeled off over the time dangles delicately. They shiver against the gentle breeze. The metal rafters have been pulled down on the main entrance. A splattered smear of red paint lies faded upon the metal surface. What happened to this place, and what's with this slapdash paint job? It's not a paint job, it's a warning gangs use. They toss red paint on someone's property as a sign that they need to pay up or else. What a disgusting mortal custom. It's just how it's done. You borrow money from the wrong people, then there's a price to pay. Money. The greed of mortals sits wrongly with me. Toast is behind Lucian. Is that your whole beef with their kind? They love money too much? It's one of a very long list. Look. You don't know what it's like having to attend to their every need in heaven. Despite your judgment in the underworld, the souls up there retain much of their personalities, and that shows in the fantasies that they can ask Lord Gary to draw up. I just... I hate seeing Lord Gary working himself to the bone for them, when in life, they'd rather give their soul to money. Cheer up, not everyone is like that. Your optimism, much like this plan, is not very inspiring. There's still no sign of the gate. Shh, listen. Your ears perk up to the sound of a muffled scream. Did you hear that? Lucian raises his ears and looks about. His eyes widen. It's faint, almost ghost-like. It's coming from inside the arcade. Help me find a way in. You circle the side of the arcade and find a side door with a lone window covered in yellow newspaper. You grab the door handle and give it a good twist, but it won't open. Damn, it's locked. You wouldn't happen to know how to pick a lock, would you? Lucian shakes his head. Well, how do you propose we get in? Let me help! The both of you scream at the top of your lungs. Lucian grabs you by your arm and kicks the door where Toast's head popped out of. The lock breaks with a loud crack and the door swings open. Dude! It's not my fault. He scared me. Toast snorts with laughter. Oh my god. I was going to offer to unlock it from the inside, but that was way more fun. Lucian and you throw dirty looks at the ghost. The angel lets go of you and instantly pulls out a feather. Let me kill him. No, don't. Toast, you better have a good explanation for why you're here. Not much to explain. I was looking for you, but I saw you were hanging around with. He points at Lucian without really acknowledging him. So, I figured if he was going to give you a hard time, it'd be better if I stuck around to bail you out if he got you in trouble. Me? Hello? I do not get into trouble. Sure you don't. Toast, we're doing something important here. You don't want to get involved unless you want to go back to the underworld. What? If you're doing something dangerous, then you're going to need me. Toast. Come on. You two don't look like you know a thing about breaking in. At least, let me be the lookout. I don't trust him. Your hunch tells you to place some trust in him. Despite being a condemned soul, the hyena hasn't done anything suspicious after how you unintentionally helped him out back then. 
Ah, uh, we don't have time to debate this. His idea isn't that bad. Let's just let him keep an eye out for us. Fine, but I'm keeping an eye on you, ghost. Beaming, Toast floats up to the roof. We better work fast. You immediately spot numerous footprints on the dusty floor when entering. You give your eyes some time to adjust to the dark. The only light is from the door where you entered from and it's rapidly fading as dusk approaches. You take out your phone and turn on the flashlight. A soft thud followed by a click of a tongue alerts you. You turn your flashlight to the source hoping to meet its source, but all you find is Lucien rubbing his snout. Ugh, this place is filthy! The arcade has seen better days. A thick layer of dust coats almost everything. Numerous arcade cabinets are lined up in aisles full of twists and turns like a maze. He pulls out the halo again, but it does not make a sound. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow at you, but you just wave him off. These footprints lead to behind the counter. Let's see what we can find. You both approach the counter. It too is blanketed in dust. Behind that there's a cabinet with many compartments gathered cobwebs. You imagine it used to be filled with prizes to be won. Above the cabinet is an old notice board filled with past years of gaming tournament ads. Without hesitation, you crouch beneath the table looking for some sign of the gate. A button, a switch, anything. Nothing down here. Help me search the cabinet. You and Lucian heave the cabinet away from the wall, but find nothing behind or below it. You scratch your mane. Ah, uh, nothing. Damn. Lucian pushes the cabinet back into position before walking over to the notifus board. Alright, let's get out of here. Lucian? Hold on! The dog stares at the notice board. Did you see something? His nose twitches as he leans in towards it. I smell a spell. You sniff the air but can't catch a whiff of anything. Taking down the board, he sets it on top of the counter. There is a spell here somewhere. Help me look. Okay, um... Air guitar competition. Anime cosplay competition. It's just a bunch of posters. No, I can feel it. They're hiding the incantation somewhere. If I wanted to hide a spell, I don't think I would hide it in plain sight. Right, let me just... He conjures a feather and waves it around the posters. The ink from the printed text begins to liquefy and slither towards one another. Once congealed, gooey tendrils start to emerge and link up with their neighbors. The pattern starts to develop as a magic ring forms. Their gooey black tendrils connect and form a magic circle. Whoa, these markings. I've never seen them before. What do we do now? Maybe... He picks up the board and puts it back where it hung. Like a key sliding into a lock, a chime rings out from the magic circle. The glowing white cracks forms across the entire wall and the shelf in front. It shatters and the space is replaced with a row of yellowed bones and skulls arranged in the shape of a gate. This is it. Lucian pulls out his device. It announces with a cold robotic tone. You have arrived at your searched item. This is it. Where did they get all those bones from? They're too big to be animal bones. That doesn't matter. Let's open it. The angel pushes against the gate, but it does not budge. It's locked. Look, there are three keyholes here. Darn it. I should have known it wouldn't be so easy. Guys! Toast? I saw two dudes coming over here. Hurry! Shit, turn off the circle. Lucien waves a feather over the board and the magic circle undoes itself. The gate reverts back into an ordinary wall. Outside you hear footsteps approaching. Frantically, you wave to Lucien and Toast to get down. The ghost floats over and the three of you hide behind the counter. You share worried glances at one another and Lucien puts a finger to his lips. What the hell happened here? Shit, man. We shouldn't have gone for that cup of coffee. How was I supposed to know someone was going to try to break in today? You think it could have been a bunch of teens like just like the other night? How would I know? I wasn't there. Do we have to report this to someone? You hear their footsteps entering the premises. Nah, let's just check the place to be sure and fix the door. Last time, those dumb teens were smoking behind the arcade cabinets. We need to get out of here. 
Lucien taps on your shoulder to get your attention. He points to himself, then to the door, then to you. He gestures to run. You understand that he aims to be a distraction. Hey, you smell that? Smells like a soul. The two of you swing your heads to toast, but he looks just as dumbfounded as you. Man, that's all you think about. We just got paid last week. Can you blame me? We don't get enough. Damn right about that. The site's clear. Let's check the counter. Toast whispers to you both. I'll distract them. You guys run. No, let me. I can do it with my feathers. You're given a sliver of time to decide. Toast's sudden volunteering throws you off, but he has a determined look in his eyes. He's been reliable so far. But one of those goons said that they could smell a soul. A normal person wouldn't know that. Your gaze falls on Lucian. Perhaps his plan would be the safest, but if he fails, King is as good as dead. You have the least to lose here. Perhaps you're the best option. Okay, I'm gonna see what happens if I pick Lucian, because I actually like Toast. <laughs> I mean, he seems the one that's most capable because he can fire his little feathers and Toast while I like him. And while he could spook mortals, probably can't spook, um, you know, whatever these people are. And so if they smell souls, that means that they might be demons, right? So yeah, let's try Lucian. Do it. Lucian conjures a feather and tosses it onto the floor. It bounces back up like it's made of rubber. The feather ricochets off the cabinets, pulling the attention of the guards. It bounces again and again, slamming against the door and crashing into some rubbish bins outside. They're making a run for it. After them. As their footsteps fade off into the distance, you audibly gasp. We're not in the clear yet. Let's head back to the apartment. You guys go. I'll make sure that they don't catch up with you. Wait, that's dangerous. I'll be fine. I'm just making sure that you guys get out here safely. Lucian nods. We need to go. Find us when we're in the clear. The ghost floats upwards and heads in the direction of the guards. You and Lucian rush off the other way and hurry to your apartment. Slow down. <sighs> I think we're in the clear. The apartment is in sight, merely a five minute walk away. You stop to catch your breath. Lucian, on the other hand, keeps a close watch on your surroundings. Huh. <sighs> you okay? I'm fine. Now keep walking, we're not safe until we're in your apartment. You both continue heading towards your place. I hope Toast will be safe. Perhaps. Well, he has avoided capture by my hands. I would think that he can avoid a few regular hooligans. There's nothing regular about those guys. Remember what they said? Yes, they were able to detect souls. Technically, demons and angels feed off of soul energy too. Could they be one of us? No, I doubt it. The magic used to hide the gate didn't incorporate any markings of our kind. You both reach the apartment entrance and climb the steps. Well, did you see who they were? I didn't. I was too busy trying to think of a way to get us out safely. You think that we can get back to the gate later? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. He speaks at a louder volume than he usually does. Your stomach twists at the thought that you've upset him somehow. Uh, hey, did I do something wrong? No, please, I just need to think. You arrive at the front of your unit door. I'll stay watch in case of any trouble. Wait, what about dinner? I got your portion too. You pull out the takeaway container from your bag. You can have it, I'm not in the mood. The sky. However, you keep your thoughts to yourself and enter your home. With your back pressed against the door, you slowly slide down before curling up on the floor. Today was just too much. Is that how he's feeling out there? Thoughts about Lucien follow you as you crawl into the shower. You reheat and set down the chicken and rice on the table before digging in. Barely a spoonful in, you notice that Lucien's share remains untouched. It's already started to get cold. You take another scoop of rice onto your spoon, but you lack any motivation to eat. All you can think about is how Lucien is feeling. You can't eat like this. The cold wind blows gently against your fur. 
Lucian stands at the same spot you last saw him. You open your mouth, but no words come out. Maybe this isn't my place to say anything. You know what? Fuck it. Lucian. Please come in and have some dinner. His head dips a little. You walk over and stand beside him on the railing. He looks ahead at the clouds. I told you I'm not hungry. A loud growl emanates from his stomach. Come on, don't do this. This is what I deserve for screwing up today, okay? I don't understand. I thought we made it out alright. Barely. Today was just... I could have... No, I should have done more. If I just figured out the halo was being tricked faster, we could have gotten more time with the gate. We have your halo. We can still find the keys. It's useless. I didn't scan the keyholes. They probably tightened security by now, so we can't go back again. I can't waste time doubting myself any longer. I need to get back there. No. We don't know who these people are or what they can do. They made a freaking gate using bones. Then what? Without information on those keyholes, we're as good as stuck. I'm so stupid. I should have taken those hooligans out and interrogated them. He ruffles his own fur, practically pulling it out. Which could have gotten you or both of us hurt. It doesn't matter if I get hurt. The mission comes first. He slams his arm on the railing. Come on, everyone messes up once in a while. I wouldn't even notice if you didn't bring it up. No, I can't mess up. Not angels, especially those that are worth anything to God. Lucian's words draw you to his eyes. Your image reflected upon their surface. I... I know how much it hurts to make a mistake. Heck, isn't that why you're here? Because I made so many already? It sucks that you suck, and there's no guarantee that you won't fuck up again. Heck, maybe you'll fuck up even more until you just want to quit your job and be left alone. What I'm getting at is, we're all going to fuck up, but at least we can be fuck-ups together. Get something to eat and figure this out. Lucian sniffles and looks away from you. He pats down his shirt before looking back at you. Ah, <sighs> that was a below-average pep talk, but thank you for trying. You smile, your heart feels more at ease. Come on, I'm not saying it a third time, let's eat. If you insist. You open the door to your apartment to see Toast floating above Lucian's plate with a piece of roasted pork in his translucent hand. Ah, you guys are done already? You. You're back. Toast drops the food and floats over to you both. Hey, hey, did you guys miss me? I missed the moment of silence that we got with your absence. Are you sure you weren't followed? Of course I'm sure. It didn't take long for those dudes to give up the chase. They were more preoccupied with fixing the door. From what I overheard, they're going to cover up the break-in to save their own asses, but they'll be keeping a closer eye than before. Ah, uh, I knew it. Look, let's put a pause on all of this and just finish dinner. Now, everyone, sit. The three of you gather around a short dinner table for the meal. Can I have that roasted pork? You may not. Can I have yours, partner? Ugh, I mean, I was, uh, okay, maybe just one. Sweet! He takes one and puts it inside his mouth. You watch the pork go down what appears to be an invisible esophagus, but it drops out of him midway and lands on the floor. Toast sighs as you pick up the meat. Damn it. I just want to eat something. A waste of time. Your kind cannot take in anything physical without a body. Yet you retain your living need for food, for sex, and for drinks. At least, that's what the Otherworld manual told me. Isn't that right, Kobu? Huh? Oh, yeah, I remember that. You're too preoccupied with your meal to really pay attention. I need to ask you about those hooligans you evaded, Toast. Did you get a good look at them? What did they look like? Did they wear anything distinctive? Couldn't tell you, pretty boy. Didn't really get a good look at them, but from what I did see, they looked like any other guy on the street. Lucian clenches his utensils tightly. Hey, if you guys need me, I'll go spy on them. I watched tons of spy films before. I doubt that that will help if they can smell you. Besides, don't you have something better to do now that you've escaped the underworld and all? Wait, shit! 
I have an appointment with Archon. I completely forgot the time. I catch you guys later. Toast. Too late, he flies out of the ceiling. We're going to be seeing more of him, aren't we? I think so. Lucian sighs and focuses back on his meal. Hey, I'm doing the stakeout tonight, right? You don't have to. That is my duty. No way, that's not fair. You already stayed up all of last night. It is my duty to keep you safe until you get back to your throne. I am not risking it. Well, I, for one, love my sleep, and I'm pretty confident that you need some too, especially after the day we've had. How about this? We, uh, patrol inside the apartment tonight. That defeats the whole purpose. Hear me out. You get the sofa, I'll be near you. If anything happens, we'll close the door, and you get to rest, and I'll be on alert. Lucien takes a spoonful of chicken rice and chews on it. You're not going to stop me asking me to sleep until I do, will you? Nope. Fine. I'll humor you. Great. Then let's chow down and get ready to hit the hay. You both finish up your dinner before getting dressed for sleep. Luckily, you have an extra blanket and pillow lying around for Lucian to use on the sofa. For the first few minutes, you lie in silence, tapping your belly. You get the feeling that Lucian isn't asleep either. You can't really see from the lower angle. Lucian? Lucian sits up towards you. Hmm? How's the sofa? Comfy? It's... adequate. Cool. You, uh, not taking your jewelry off before you sleep? The angel touches the piece of gold that circles his neck. This is more magic than a piece of jewelry. It's my vow as an angel to serve God and proof that we receive God's blessing. So I can't really take it off that easily. Besides, having it on makes me feel comfortable too. Huh. And every angel has that? Yeah, we're all gifted one upon creation. You can liken it to a confirmation or initiation. What do you give your underlings? I think they get a commemorative pen and a company t-shirt that says Team Demos. Demos? A typo. They printed way too many and we haven't fixed it since my dad was in office. Interesting. Says the angel who certainly traveled all the way to Earth to learn fun facts about the demon world. Uh, hey, about the gate. Did you think of something? What if we ask Amors for some help? What? It's dangerous to involve anyone else in this. Besides, what makes you think that he would be willing to help? The instant he finds out that you're a demon, if he won't destroy you, he'll exercise you or worse, turn you into a summon. I know. That's why we don't tell him everything. You want to deceive him into helping us? That's despicable. It's not deception. We're just, you know taking creative liberties with the truth. Lucian lies back down. You can hear him turning on the sofa. I won't have any part of this. How many more mortals do you want to get dragged along on this problem? Well, do you have a better idea? Exactly. I don't like it as much as you do, but we're obviously stuck. And he might even know about who would be behind this. If we have to involve him, he has every right to know what's going on. Lying by omission is still lying. My goodness, I just know this is going to affect my promotion. It's going to be another hundred years before I get another chance at it. Drama queen alert. Relax, I think Gary is pretty understanding. And even if you didn't get the promotion, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I've been working my whole life for this. I want to be one of Lord Gary's top angels. It's just a job, man. Don't stress yourself out about it. Easy for you to say. You're at the top of your company. There's nowhere else left to go. When did being the Demon Lord become just a job for you? Since always, I was smart enough not to let the job consume me. Did it though? Did it ever come close to consuming you? The last remark felt like a dirty blow. I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. No, it's fine. I just don't like remembering that part of my life. So, you being sent here had something to do with your job? Your fingers dig deep into the mattress. There's a strain in your eyes that you try to hold back. Could we maybe not talk about that for now? Okay. 
An audible sniffle echoes off the walls. I just realized that we went completely off topic. What were we talking about? Um, Morris? Whether we want to ask him to help us find the keys to open the underworld gate. Well, I'll admit you're right. We don't have any other alternatives for now. I'll follow your lead. Okay, guess we can meet him tomorrow after my shift. I'll be around. Night, Lucian. Hmm. In the morning, you awaken first. Lucian is still deep asleep as you let him be. You write him a note that you're going to work, and remind him not to go to near the gate on his own. As a prank, you stick the note over his right nipple. It brings a smile to your face seeing him snore. You're stuck working for the rest of the day. To your horror, a promo sale is on today. A popular children's video game that involves catching cute mascot characters is collaborating with a hot dog company. For every three hot dogs bought, a customer gets a sticker. Collect 10 and they can exchange it for a random package that may or may not contain a rare figure. You wish that you can open them all and take the prizes for yourself, but that would be against the rules. The unrelenting onslaught of customers strains your energy dry. The end of the shift couldn't come any sooner. Stepping out of the store, Lucian is already waiting for you. Uh, hey, been waiting long? Not much, I just got here. From where? Honestly, I slept the day away. He sighs and shakes his head. Cute note, by the way. Heh, <laughs> let's go before Morris closes up. Lead the way. The two of you head to the shopping district where Morris's office is located. As you walk, you conjure up excuses to pull up if Morris gets suspicious of you and your partner's identity. Lucian remains silent as he walks beside you, his face fixated on the same bored expression he maintains all the time. You sneak glances at him. The angel looks off at the surroundings with glazed eyes. I really could have handled last night better. Why is he even making such a big deal about this? Heck, why am I even bothered by what he thinks? You begin to focus on the pavement beneath your feet, mind leaping from one thought to another. Slowly, before you know it, a memory from the past begins to swell up within your mind. It was a day from when you just started taking on the role as the ruler of the underworld. Vendrick was there. Vendrick, I have a question. Yes, my lord? Did anyone ever try to find out why these souls kept trying to escape? There is no mystery to that. Those embers hate to be tortured. Which brings up the question, why do we even torture them in the place? The soul energy output barely reaches what above makes in their method. Hmm. Pampering souls, you mean? What challenge is there in granting all their wishes? What we demons do is far more complicated. It's artistic, even. I just don't see the point. We need that soul energy to build the underworld, to pay our employees and keep the world in balance. So why aren't we switching to a more productive method? Bendrick smiles at you, a rare occurrence than a day where he wasn't telling you off for something. You think just like your father, always about the end results. You haven't seen the bigger picture, the meaning the torture inspires. These souls, whether a victim of circumstance or by their own free will, made choices that brought them about suffering to those around them. The suffering they go through now is a reflection of the anguish they place on the others before. As much as they despise it, they must suffer, for they are to be an example to all mortal life, to push them towards living an honorable life. Sometimes the end goal is meaningless if the methods used to achieve it ruins whatever value that goal had in the first place. Kobu. Blinking, Lucian's yell pulls you out of your own thoughts. You turn around an unfamiliar alleyway to meet Lucian's vexed expression. He makes you feel like a sheep who's strayed too far from the flock. Watch where you're going. You nearly walked into a wall. Oh, uh, sorry. As Lucian walks ahead, you're left pondering. I wonder, is this the same thing? Ah, shut up, Brain. Stop doubting yourself. We need his help. Screw the truth. Approaching the office, you see a flight of stairs on the side of the building leading to the second floor. Right above the entrance to the stairs is a sign that reads Morris Boris, Exorcism Extraordinaire. You and Lucian exchange silent nods as you make your way up. Morris sits behind a, a worn-out-looking desk, tinkering with his watch. Give me a minute. 
I'm just working on recharging this watch, and no, it's not working. Morris looks up at you. Oh, hey, it's you two. Take a seat. I've got coffee or tea if you like. Neither. Please, uh, I need your help. Come on, I brew a mean cup of joe. What about you? He turns his attention to Lucian. I want to say... Lucy? It's Lucian, and also no, I am not thirsty. Well then, it's down to business. You guys came at a great time. Morris takes out a briefcase and shows you its contents. What do you need? I got charms for ghosts and all kinds of pure salt for your curse removal needs. You take a deep breath to steady your nerves. I need help with saving King. He was... kidnapped by a demon that attacked the store. Well, I don't hear that every day. I never suspected King would be someone to mess around with demons though. He looks so timid. No, it wasn't his fault. He took a demon's attack that was meant for me. Now the boss of these demons are sending more of them after me. You? Why are demons going after you? Your eyes dart over to Lucian, the angel leaning back, watching in stone-cold silence. Mm, because... You look at the table. Because in college, I was in a super goth phase and I accidentally summoned a demon and... Uh... You know, I wished for something, didn't honor the bargain. I've been on the run since. Morris and Lucian's jaws drop. This is a joke, right? You two are trying to pull a prank or something? Morris raises an eyebrow at Lucian, but the angel just shrugs it off. Hmm. Okay then, what did you sacrifice to summon this demon? Uh, oh crap. I can't quite remember, but I think it was a hamster from a store? What? You're describing a demon capable of ordering other demons to go after you. That is at least a general class demon. You would have needed to sacrifice a person to get them to even speak to you on this plane of existence. Fuck. Your hands tremble, your heartbeat is climbing as you search for ways to explain yourself out of this. Morse points at the dog. And this has been bothering me the most. What is his role in all of this? I'm sure Kobu can explain that for me. Can't you, Kobu? He smiles mischievously at you. He is a holy person from the same city I hail from. And where is that? Um... Um... Your eyes dart around for a clue. Pen... Ink... Tray... Sun? Did you just say penetration? Sorry, but this is getting too convoluted for me. I don't have time to waste on a prank. No, wait. You raise your hands to get him not to close the discussion so soon. Ugh, fine, I don't have a choice. This is the truth. Formally, I was a demon lord of the underworld. Then a few years back, I was kicked out by one of my generals and have been on the run since. King was kidnapped. I won't lie about that. That's why I need your help to find out how to open the underworld gate here. We're up against demons that will show up at any time to kill me, and I have no way to stop them. Lucian sits upright. This part I can vouch on my authority as an angel. An angel? Yes, I was sent by God to get Kobu back to the underworld and assume his rightful place as a demon lord. You can't expect me to believe I have a demon and an angel working together in front of me. Lucian leans forward and conjures a feather in his hand. Neat trick, I can pull cards out of a deck too. With a snap of his fingers, the feather floats midair and shoots to the ceiling, burying itself like a knife before dissipating away. Morris stares at the feather, then back at both of you, then back at the feather several times. Hell no, never in a million years, I'm not helping a demon! Please, this could affect not only our two companies, but the state of your world. I don't care, by the sound of it, you two already know what you got to do. Just find anyone else but me to do it. Morris, please. I'm sorry, but I've made my decision. Now please, I've got exorcism materials to buy, and it's closing time. It feels like all the air in your lungs is sucked out. Your seemingly lifeless body limps as you leave the office. Lucine hurries along. When you both reach the foot of the stairs, he grabs you by the wrists and pulls you into a nearby alley. What are you? He pins you against the wall, his hands press besides your head, forcing you to look up right at him. He smirks at you. What? What? Looks like your plan fell apart. 
Hey, being honest didn't help either. I know. I'm just rubbing it in your cute little face either way. He boops your nose. Now, shh. He peeks out of the corner, then back at you. He'll start moving anytime soon. We'll follow him. Why? He already said that he wouldn't help us. We're done. For a supposed pragmatist, you give up way too easily. Yeah, well, you're naive and... And... You're too cocky. Thank you. Now focus. He's on the move. Let's give him some distance before we follow. Again? Why? He might not be willing to help us, but he did say that he's restocking exorcism materials. Odds are, we could at least meet someone who knows other exorcists. That's a gamble. Better than going home empty-handed. On that, I agree. Once Lucian's certain that Morris is far enough away, you tail him carefully. You've been following Morris for about an hour. Your feet ache and the streets are dark. He enters the housing residence, turning corners here and there. Looking around, you realize many of these houses have been put up for sale. Their lawns are overgrown with scourges of mosquitoes buzzing about. You struggle to keep up with Lucian, but eventually Morris stops. The both of you are in a corner where Morris is, the mosquitoes not far behind to chase their new prey. You put your annoyance on the buzzing pests aside as you and Lucian press up against the wall to hear the conversation Morris is having. Jin! Morris? You catch a glimpse of the other person. He's taller than the boar by about a head. His frame is hidden behind an oversized and tattered looking coat. Next to his feet is an old blue can. Ew, that could be a piss can. Shh. Oh, Morris, must you really spend this beautiful date night talking to the likes of me? Shut up and give me the goods. With that mouth, no wonder you're single. The tall person hisses. Here. He pulls out a paper bag that Morris snatches away. The boar checks the contents of the bag. His ears rise up as he grips the bag tightly. Why do I count only five batteries? The deal was eight. The cost of manufacturing those batteries is rising, Morris, my boy. Everyone's in a tight spot in this economy, and I I'm no different. But I need them! Then get more money or not. Doesn't really matter to me. You scumbag! Please, feel free to take your business elsewhere. Oh, wait. There isn't anyone else. How sad. Morris growls and stomps off into another corner. The guy is some kind of magic salesman? Maybe, but don't you think that there is something weird about his appearance? Not really. He looks like some homeless guy. Come on. Kobu, wait! You step out of the shadows and approach Jin. Hi there. Who goes there? Jin turns with a flourish and brandishes a knife. Up close you see that he's an average looking brown snake brandishing a less than average looking knife. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Adrenaline courses through your veins. You raise your hands up in self-defense. There's no telling what this guy would do. Put that down. Not until you clowns identify yourselves. We're friends of Morris, that's all. Ha! Huh. Morris has no friends. You must be from that cult. Your insane leader finally has the balls to make a move this, is it? No, we're not from anyone. Come on, put the knife down and we'll talk. You're breathing faster and faster. The snake leaps towards you, but Lucian intercepts and blocks the knife with a quick swipe of his dagger-like feather. Just as the feather appears instantaneously, he removes it just as fast to avoid the snake noticing what he did. Their hands move in a flurry. The snake relentlessly stabs at the dog, who barely evades each strike. One of the attacks manages to land, cutting through his right arm. Lucien counters with a kick to the snake's face. Jin takes the full blunt of the hit, toppling back but stopping his fall with his tail and bouncing back up again. It's then that you notice something happening to the snake's form, as though a layer of static is applied to him. Lucien makes a strike for the snake's face again. Jin blocks it this time, but he leaves himself wide open. With his free hand, the angel grips at Jin's abdomen. Lucien's right hand glows brightly and blasts the snake away. The sound of glass breaking emanates throughout the air. Jin stumbles back. Wave-like motions form around him. His appearance morphs away into something else. 
What in the world? You watch, stunned. The snake is neither demon nor angel. Whatever power he radiates is a different class of being. The snake spins his blade and conjures another from thin air. Now, why did you go and do that? No matter, now I'll kill you easier. Black smoke tendrils erupt from his back, each holding the same knife. The shadows lunge towards the both of you. Turn flesh to ice. Capture this moment, an icy prison. By my name, suspend my foe in time. Beku! A gust of icy cold wind blows from the assailant's back. No! Layers of white ice form around them. Their black tendrils slow to a stop, un unable to reach you. In an instant, Jin is frozen. His smoky tendrils shatter, leaving only his frozen body behind. Clutching your chest, you breathe slowly to calm your nerves. You look to your companion. His breathing is labored, but he quickly regains his composure. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you too insane? Are you purposefully trying to get yourself killed to get to the underworld? Morris stomps over towards you, bearing his tusks. You puff out your chest and look him in the eye. No, we came to look for help. Help that you denied us. And this was the smartest idea that you could think of. Don't you know who you're messing with here? He points to the frozen snake. No, I don't, and I don't care. I'll do whatever it takes to bring King back. The boar's snout blows out hot air upon your face. He turns away with his hands besides his hips. Please, if not for me, at least do this for King. You know he isn't a bad person and he needs help. Morris, hear him out. I wouldn't go out of my way to get another mortal to help if it wasn't the only option. The exorcist turns and locks his eyes with you. This alpaca friend of yours really means that much to you? I wouldn't be standing here without him. He turns around for a minute without saying anything. You and Lucian exchange nervous glances at each other as you wait his answer. I'm gonna regret this. I'll help. Your eyes beam with hope. To be clear, I don't trust either of you. You're just demonstrated that you're both capable of causing deadly trouble just by showing up in places. Typical of celestial beings. Nothing bad really happened. Lucian's not dying or anything. Lucian conjures another feather that's big enough to cover that slash on his arm. He places it onto the wound before the feather radiates and seals it up. You wonder if this innate healing is something most angels possess. At the cost of my very expensive and limited charm, which I had to use on the same guy who sold it to me. Anyways, I figure it would be better if I keep a close eye on you two. However, there is one condition. Once all of this is over, both of you must leave Kibbleton. But... But that means that you're saying farewell to King. Farewell to the life that you've made here. You struggle to form the words, but you know what must be done. For King's sake. So you nod, your voice breaking as you speak. <sighs> Alright. Help us. And it's a deal. Good. What do we do with this giant popsicle, though? We gotta lock them away or finish them off. They're a mythical creature, and they're dangerous. Yes, they are dangerous, but we also need their help. You mentioned something about a gate. Yeah, there's a gate built to enter the underworld in town. But there are locks on it, and we can't open it. Jin might know about it. Him? You walk over and tug on his thumb. I don't know if we can trust him. He did try to kill us. Crack. Oh shit. By accident, the snake's thumb is broken off. Hey, don't mess with that. The spell is just about to wear off. We should give it a try. Mythical creature or not, we don't have any other way around this. Unless, Morris, do you know how to get to the underworld? The boar shakes his head. Also, Kobu, as you advised me, lay off on the whole mythical creature term. Be nice. Huh? He nods his head towards the frozen snake. Somehow, you get the hint that he's implying that it's too dangerous to reveal too much around the snake. But the thumb? What do I do with it, Lucian? Oh, I don't know. Eat it. Lucian! Just hang on to it. Alright, the spell's coming down. The three of you stand around the snake. In three, two... The layer of ice around the snake evaporates away. Jin gasps and coughs. Morris, you bastard. You dare to freeze me. I couldn't have you hurting my customers. 
Um, sorry, this might be a bad time, but I kinda broke this. You show the snake his thumb. The thug's scrunched up face melts away to reveal a silent horror. Jin quickly looks at a bleeding stump where his thumb should be, and then back at Kobu. Give me that! He snatches his severed body part from you, placing it on his left hand. The thumb is enveloped in black smoke. The smoke gradually shrinks away, leaving only the reattached thumb. Jin addresses Morris once more. Customers? Morris? Yes, they are a very enthusiastic customers, who followed me here, and reminded me that I had to get something from you. Sure, there was a rocky introduction, but we can do business, can we not? You expect me to believe that Dog and his fists and that absent-minded looking cat are just your customers? They broke my disguise. Don't worry, I think you're hard to look at in any form you take. Jin leers at Lucian. Uh how? -huh. He steps closer to the angel and stares him down. The snake's forked tongue darts in and out of his wicked smile. Such a big mouth on your pretty face. How I want to just put a muzzle on it. Lucian remains unfazed, choosing to wear a bored expression towards Jin. The exorcist puts a hand on the snake's shoulder. Step off, Jin. We need information. Who doesn't? He slaps Moore's hand away. Name your wish, plebeians. They need to know how to open the gate to the underworld in town. You see the snake's eyes shine as a smile widens. How, pray tell, did you come to know about that? None of your business. I'm buying your discretion at the same time. The snake tosses his head up high. Even if I do know something about this gate, you know the boss won't be happy that I use what resources we have for activities outside the family. Jin wraps his tail around Morris and pulls him close. The snake presses his face to Morris. The snake's forked tongue almost brushes against the boar's ear. He, Jin whispers, Tell me, how badly do you want it? Just name your price. Perfect. He slithers back to his side of the street. Well, I suppose I could have you and your so-called customers work on my list of chores here. If you haven't noticed, the cult that recently made it to town is being a thorn in my side. Since they planted roots here, business has been going down. I'm afraid to ask, but what exactly are you people? You're right, you should be afraid. But know this, you're going to be making a deal with a very powerful family. The Rings. The Rings? Never heard of them. As you should. If you did, it would mean that we have few heads in the family to silence. The local folk refer to us as just a town gang. The gang. Looks like these bunch aren't just a town nuisance around here. Back to the cult. At first, we assumed that they were just a passing inconvenience, but they have been spreading their influence that has reached the ears of our leader, Mr. K. You catch a tone of disgust when he mentions a leader. Mr. K has given me the honor to remove the eyesore of a cult, and I am forcing it upon you too. You're kidding. Why aren't I involved in this? Because you will be dealing with a second issue. What exactly do you need us to do? Get rid of the cult leader and destroy whatever they use to develop their influence. By get rid, you mean... Kill or run out of town. Anything. Just make sure that that scum can't try the same thing twice. You could just report them to the police. The laws move too slowly, and there's no guarantee that the more important artifacts the cult leader has won't be moved before they are caught. What artifacts? I looked into the group and learned a majority of the members joined because of the leader's ability to predict people's deaths. In other words, by joining the cult, its members feel that they are sheltered from death. Ridiculous. But it works. Did you even find out what this artifact looked like? Why yes, it's the hood that the leader wears. Destroy it, destroy the leader, and make sure to snoop around their computers as well. What are we searching for? Cult porn files on their orgies? Cults aren't built on faith and charisma anymore. These days, they require connections and lots and lots of money. Mostly illegal acquired, of course. Make sure to be thorough and scrub everything. Do this, and I'll give you information on how to get your keys. I don't like this, and I should be helping them. 
You won't have the time. Our members reported that a demon has been leaving its presence around town. A demon? You and Lucian exchanged nervous glances. Here I was thinking who I could send for this, and here you are. It must be fate. Find where the demon lurks and destroy it. You snort. What? Is something funny? Just a nervous twitch, thinking about the demon. Whoa, hang on a minute. You're getting way more out of the steel than we are. It's a demon, Boris. Rotten little creatures that we'll all be happier without. Tell you what, I'll be nice and even offer you the three remaining batteries you desire as payment. Morris growls. Give us a minute. You, he calls you and Lucien away from Jin. You heard that snake. Do you want to do this? Wait, when he said demon, did he mean? No, I think it's something new. It could be another freelancer. What's that? The demons who are after me. Look, I really don't see any other way to get those keys. Morris takes a deep breath. Hmm. Okay. You all return to Jin. We'll take the deal. Jin cackles maniacally. Excellent. Then let's shake on it. A third arm emerges from his stomach. Do I have to touch that? I don't have any disinfectant on me. Lucian. Fine. You all shake his hands. The moment your hand makes contact, a jolt of burning energy spreads across the palm of your hand. What the hell? Pulling your hand away, you now have a black cube with you. What's this? How else do you expect to get rid of a magical artifact? Activate that device when you have the artifact. It will unleash a powerful magic that will destroy it. Okay. Good luck. And if any of you plan to perish, do make sure your insurance is renewed. Snapping his fingers, Jin disappears. All that remains is the old can by the wall. The three of you walk back the way you all came. I'm officially checked out. Morse wipes the sweat from his brow. Ditto. Hand me the bomb. I want to check it out. You pass the black cube to Lucian. You guys want to grab something to eat? Six fans is probably still open. We could get takeout. After the day I've had, I'll take it. But you're paying. Why me? Morse pats you on the shoulder. Because you're my customer, and them's my terms. You groan, but you follow him either way. Lucian doesn't say much during the walk, his attention taken up completely by the cube. To be continued. Oof. <sighs> oh, Kobu, Kobu, Kobu. What have you gotten yourself into? Well, where have what have you and Lucian gotten yourselves into, I guess? Because it's his route. So, I'm surprised to see Morris again. It's like, just can't get rid of him, can you? <laughs> um, but yeah. So, at the very least, it's nice that he's helping. Um, I hope that if Toast shows up again, that he doesn't get exercised by um, Morris. It would be interesting if it turns out that in each route, you end up getting help from everyone. <laughs> that even, that they it all kind of leads into all of them helping you, but in their own way. Like Toast getting help from the mysterious demon which, you know, is an Archon. Which, you know, it means a Demon Lord, I guess. Um, and, but it, it still requires help from Morris and the Angel in their own little way. And in Morris's route, it does require help from Toast and the Angel, even though Morris doesn't want anything to do with them. Um, I'm, I'm assuming eventually in Morris's route, he's going to find out that you're the Demon Lord, even if you're depowered. And he's not going to be happy about that, but, you know, still. But, you know, back to Lucian. Um, I'm curious to see if Lucian's waning powers is going to, you know, derail the whole cult mission. And I'm assuming since Toast is also going to be dealing with the cult, that Morris is also going to be dealing with it. And they're going to each be dealing with it on their in their in their own ways. Which is interesting because it means that, you know, regardless of which route you pick, that you're still going to end up in the same place. But again, in their own way, which I actually don't mind. 
because you're still you're still showing a side of the a story that's unique to each route, even if it ends up in the same place. No. So I'm willing to read it if that's what happens. And developer, if you're hearing this right now, you know, you're more than welcome to either confirm or deny what I'm saying to me. <laughs> um, they usually have a talk with me after, you know, after they watch the video. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah. So I'm curious to see more about Lucian. It's obvious he, he kind of has a dog mentality about, you know, um, serving Gary. Where, like, even the, the necklace, it's kind of like a collar, like a dog collar. I'm wondering if eventually he's going to take it off. Anyways, um, but yeah, you know, write down in the comments what you thought so far about Lucian's route. And yeah, so uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Where the Demon Lurks yourself, uh, you can find it over on Itch, and you can find a direct link to it from the Where the Demon Lurks official Twitter page, which, you know, will have hopefully a direct link to that. It usually does. And I will also be linking down for their Patreon. So if you would like to support the project and get early access to builds, which I'm assuming the next one will be Toast. And I think that they also have like little development logs and like, like, um, you guys get to see, um, like art and some other sprites and stuff like that earlier before anyone else. So yeah, you know, subscribe and, you know, tell them that you like the project or just tell them that you like the project in general because they do have a discord and you can get in there and, you know, tell them. But yeah, so um, I guess that's it for now and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.